Thank you, Seekers. I'm Nick. Surprise, surprise. There's a new card in town and your sub box is probably filled with videos looking at them. So thanks for taking the time to come and check out our video. With that said, Nvidia sent over their RTX 3060 Ti Founders Edition for us to check out. So we decided to run it through our regular suite of benchmarks in both Windows and Linux and see how this card stacks up against some other GPUs we've had through the studio lately. So let's check out this little card. To kick this off, we've got no idea about availability or whether or not you'll be able to buy these cards anytime soon or at launch, but the launch date is right now when this video goes live, but I really have to stress this like we've been doing with all these videos, it is subject to availability. It seems as though the stock shortages have been the trend this year, so yeah, that, that's all I'm gonna say about that. With that said, there's a lot of data to unpack with this video. There are chapters in all of our videos, so if you wanna to jump to a certain section of a video, it's as easy as mousing over the progress bar or checking out the timestamps in the description. Also, make sure you watch the whole video to get the context of this video as well. These are the out of the box figures and all of our GPU videos are designed to be this way because a vast majority of people will just never overclock their GPUs. And this is just more indicative of real users. For people who wanna know how these cards overclock, we might actually come back to this in a separate video when we compare the other AIB versions of the 3060 Ti. We do have a few of them, but we decided for the launch of these cards that we're gonna take a look at the Founders card, because we've never done a Founders like video launch at launch time before. Also, just to make this clear as well, we don't have a Radeon 6800 either for comparison, so that's why you're not seeing those results here. Okay, with all that said, let's get these benchmarks comparisons out of the way. The graphs are weighted based on performance of the cards that we're not focusing on from our entire database. The graphs change because cards perform differently and some cards get knocked off the graphs some people don't like it this way. We've made it a little bit easier with this video, but the truth is that's what works for us. And yeah, we use our regular test bench for this as well to give you guys accurate results based on all of the testing that we've been doing with all of these latest GPUs in this latest generation. So let's kick it off with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. You can use that magical little pause button at any time during the video to take a look at the graphs for longer. The first thing you're probably noticing, even with this 1080p benchmark, is that the 3060 Ti is slightly faster than the 2080 Super. And this is really gonna be the trend that you're gonna see across the video, minus a few benchmarks. When we compare Windows to Linux, we're seeing the Linux performance be slightly better than with Windows with Vulkan vs DX12. And this is usually the case as well, and you're also seeing this with the other cards on the graph as well. Now we put the 2080 Super next to the 3060 Ti for a quick reference for you guys, just to make it a little bit easier as well, because this is what Nvidia is really saying. They're saying, hey, this card is better than the 2080 Super, so let's see if it actually is. At 1440p, we're seeing a small uplift compared to the 2080 Super. Is it enough for it to be considered faster though, as it does lay kind of just outside that margin of error? In Linux, it's the inverse of this, where there's only one frame difference and the 2080 Super is on top. At 4K, we're seeing the same being echoed with Windows being slightly faster than with Linux with the 3060 Ti, but only being marginally faster than the 2080 Super. All right, let's jump on over to Unige and Superposition. For these tests, we performed three of them in total. We used a 4K optimized preset, a 1080p extreme preset, and a 1440p preset with motion blur and depth of field turned off. We sometimes get comments along the lines of us using this stock OpenGL implementation with Mesa drivers versus DX11 for comparison. We're only comparing the out of the box experience. So I hope that makes a little bit more sense for the Linux users out there. First up with the 1080p extreme benchmark, this one is highly GPU bound. And again, we're seeing the 3060 Ti equaling both the 2080 
and 2080 Super in Windows. In Linux, the OpenGL version does not perform as well. And that's kind of the story with Linux, regardless of the kernel or the driver being used. We've got something interesting cooking up with the Ubuntu team for another video. So stay tuned for that. This is gonna be really fun. But yeah, for now, let's just keep going with these. At 1440p in Windows, the 3060 Ti is slightly faster than the 2080 Super. The generational improvement with Ampere is shaping up to be pretty impressive so far with the 3060 Ti. In Linux, all of the cards around the middle of this graph from the 3070 down to the 6800 XT are performing relatively close to each other. The 3060 Ti would slot in just above the 6800 XT for context. At 4K, we're seeing the same thing happen in Windows that we saw with the 1080p Extreme Benchmark. In Linux at 4K, the 2080 Super edges just out a little bit over the 3060 Ti by a single frame. Next up is Basemark GPU. Now Basemark gives us a great indication of Vulkan performance in Windows and for Linux. At 1080p, we're seeing the 3060 Ti performing closer to the 2080 Ti than the 2080 Super. The reason you're seeing the 1660 Super being pulled up onto the graph is because the 6800 XT did not complete this benchmark. Even with the latest drivers after the card being released, we still cannot get it to complete a 1080p run. We actually talked about this in another video and that's in the top right hand corner right now if you want to check that out at your leisure. In Linux, the same is happening at 1080p with the 3060 Ti, only being two frames slower than the 2080 Ti and pulling right away from the 2080 Super. At 1440p in Windows, it shows the 3060 Ti sitting right in the middle of both the 2080 Ti and the 2080 Super. In Linux, we're seeing the same result being echoed again with the 3060 Ti slotting in between the 2080 Ti and the 2080 Super. And finally at 4K, we're seeing the same thing in both Windows and for Linux as well. Now, this is gonna be a little bit controversial, but we decided to omit the shadow of the Tomb Raider DLSS and RTX benchmarks, as well as the Death Stranding results from this video because you guys have told us that it didn't really matter to you. And we're actually working on a new suite of ray tracing and DLSS slash Fidelity FX benchmarks that we're gonna introduce next year. And there's gonna be a mega roundup early next year that will show absolutely everything that we found with all of these GPs. But for now, we're just gonna omit it because we've got something a bit more interesting planned in the future. We ran our one hour stress test in Fermark and we couldn't get the 3060 Ti Founders Edition above 69 degrees in our 18 degree climate controlled office. This result is actually a lot better than I expected given the cooler is so tiny. Be aware though that we're running on an open air test bench. The results in a closed system will be far different from what we observed here. We include this result because our open air test environment is consistent with everything that we've tested across the board. As far as power consumption, we observed it hitting a board power draw maxing out at 197 watts at full load over the period of one hour. And this is a fraction lower than the advertised 200 watts board power. As a bit of a side note as well, we've actually tested a few other 3060 Ti's and the draw is more on those cards than it is with this one. So yeah, this one is pretty close to the mark and it's good to see that. We also observed the 3060 Ti Founders Edition to have near silent operation over our testing period. You have to remember on an open air test system, you're gonna hear everything. In a closed system, you're not gonna hear this card. You most likely will never hear this card. Acoustic observations make a lot more sense for a normal user because most of the numbers don't make sense to regular users. 
Acoustics are only really tangible if the card is sitting next to you. And with that said, overall, I'm really liking the size of this card too. It's a relatively small two slot card that measures around 24 centimeters in length and it's not super long. It's a nice card. And personally for builds, I prefer working with cards like this because they're smaller and they're more versatile. And I suspect people who will buy a card like this or this card in particular will build smaller systems. As far as the pricing for the NVIDIA RTX 3060 Ti Founders Edition, it'll be going for around 399 US dollars at the time of filming this video. I don't know about Australian pricing because we're not even sure that we're gonna get them here. Obviously this again is subject to availability and I got no idea if you're actually gonna be able to buy these at launch and I suspect the AIB versions will be a bit more expensive than this Founders card. And this has kind of been the trend with all GPUs lately, regardless of who makes them. Anyways, guys, let me know what you think of the 3060 Ti. I honestly think this is one of the best generational leaps with Ampere so far. And let us know in the comments if this is something that you're interested in grabbing for yourself. I'm really keen to hear your thoughts on all of this. We do have more 3060 Ti AIB card videos coming shortly. And I think that the 3060 Ti, this little guy here, was probably the worst kept secret in internet history. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. If you didn't like this video, you know what to do, hit that dislike button twice and tell us what you hated about it. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak, we seek. And honestly, this card, I don't know, like, Here's my head, right? It's really, really small. And I just wanted to, to mention as well, the finish on this card is actually more white than it is silver. So if you're looking at using this for like a white system, I think this is gonna look pretty decent. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching.